A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom, as I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. From the Psalm 2092, we sing, Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight, yet we are courageous. And we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, this is how the kingdom, this is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, to what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can be used for it? It is like a mustard seed that, when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. The great invention of a camera has come a long way from its original days. Uh, it was much more complicated to take a photograph uh, in the way that it was first designed. Uh, and as we know, it's evolved into uh, even greater types of cameras, like video camera, for example. Uh, and we certainly, in our own day and age, know the power that that can have. Uh, at any point, you can pull out your phone. Most of us have them uh, with cameras on them that can do video, and we can capture moments is what it's to do, capture moments. Uh, one of the things that a camera can do is, uh, it's that, um, oh, my brain just forgot it. Just forgot it. Mm. Time lapse, thank you. She was here last night. So we can take a time lapse of an event. You know, you see this. Most of the time lapse events that I watch are these uh, about a minute and a half, two minute, uh, kind of YouTubes of uh, people putting together some kind of dish real quick. You just see them put it all together and wham, bam, it's all done. But it's a time lapse. But again, it's to capture an event. And the reason I bring this to our attention is because Jesus is kind of using the same kind of language. He's using language that people can relate to uh, because that mustard seed really is a time lapse event, isn't it? Anything. Matter of fact, anytime we plant a seed, it's really about time lapse. And we hear that the, uh, the person who planted that seed doesn't really know how it all works. Now, we figured that out. But if we did a time lapse and we planted a kernel of corn, it's going to grow very fast. It'll grow about four inches a day. And supposedly you can hear corn growing. Not that I've ever had that experience. But in a time lapse, we could do that. So we don't have to stand there you know, for seven days and watch it or seven weeks or whatever it is. We can do it in about three seconds. So it's a great reality for us to help us understand it. Exactly why would Jesus be talking in this way? Well, he's begun his inaugural ministry. <clears throat> and the Gospel of Mark is always very quick to get to most of the important things that Jesus is, wants to know. And he keeps saying, what can... I compare the kingdom of God to? Or what does the kingdom of God look like? Because that's what Jesus came to establish. He came to establish a kingdom of God, but that wasn't in an instant moment. It's been a time lapse of that establishment. And think about that. <clears throat> Not long ago, we celebrated the Feast of Pentecost, where they lost their leader, as they perceived. He had been crucified. And he kept saying, I'm going to be raised on the third day. They didn't really get all that. Then they're locked away <clears throat> in that room. And he says, peace be with you to 11 of them. Okay, Judas was no longer a part of it. To 11 of them. 11. Here's the time lapse. 1.9 billion Catholics in the world today. Time lapse. 
That seed was planted way back then. And even when they were downtrodden, they were, they were upset because Jesus had been killed. And so he begins with, peace be with you. And that's what we continue to hear in this gospel because when Mark started to write this gospel down, a lot of things had occurred against the early Christians. Peter and Paul were now dead. They had been martyred. They were no longer out proclaiming the word of God. Rome caught on fire and Nero blamed the Christians. It wasn't a good time. It was really a catastrophe for them. So he's trying to give them words of encouragement just as Jesus did to make sure that when times are difficult, when you have struggles, or when it seems to be all failing, we cannot give up on our faith. Because as Paul tells us, we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith. And that's what we have to always lean into, even to this day, because guess what? The world still doesn't like Christians by and large. The world still goes after us by and large. Sometimes in the church we fail, and sometimes it's morally terrible. But we're still here. We're still together. We're still a church. We're still part of that tender shoot that was taken off of that cedar tree and planted in an impossible situation only to grow strong and firm and provide and care. The birds will be able to come. There'll be other trees. They'll all be able to survive. It's an imagery to encourage people not to give in to the difficulties of the day and the struggle, but to rely on faith. Again, so Paul says, we walk by faith, not by sight. And yet sometimes that's what we want to see. We want to see that picture in all its completeness. But it doesn't really work that way. Jesus is saying what the kingdom of God is like. And just before this, and it's a parable that we would know, a farmer went out to plant, and he threw seeds here on this path, and seeds on this path, and seeds on that path. And as Jesus said, he had to explain it to the apostles after it was all over that some were in shallow and it didn't last very long. Some gave up when it became too difficult. They were choked off. Some were scorched by the terrible sun in the heat of the day. And so he's continuing to teach about that kingdom of God that it's made up in a variety of ways. Eventually, some of those seeds, what, did produce good fruit, 60, 100 fold. And that's still the truth of today. Our church has strong branches because of that word planted so long ago has continued to grow even to this day. That the church herself is that mustard tree to have those strong branches for those who are not a part of the church for a variety of reasons. They become alienated. There's a branch for them if we go out and help them with that word of God. Over and over and over again, you and I are the ones that are called today who go into this word, this world with the word of God, because that's what gets planted. That's what grows over the course of time in a strong way. And so we are being encouraged in our own lives to be a people, as Paul says, that we go forth in a broken world that has its struggles and it has its challenges and it has its difficulties, but we think we face that in our faith because we never know we're like that farmer who really doesn't know how that seed really grew and became what it did it's about the planting and then about the nurturing and it's about the accompanying people in their journey of faith let us truly lean into let us strive in this coming week to really give witness to this world not with some kind of megaphone or some kind of picture or a video but simply how we live, that when we go into our work environments, we're a person of faith. When we go into our homes, we're people of faith. When we get in our car and drive around Memphis, we try to be people of faith <laughs> to the best of our ability, right? In every moment at every time. And that is what our God calls us to because that is what the kingdom of God looks like.